<laughs> Hello and welcome. Hello, Rifters. I'm uh, Simatic Bruce, uh, head of developer and community relations here at Altspace VR. And we are in the offices of Altspace VR in Redwood we are City. Here in Redwood City, doing it up. To boil it down, Altspace is to have some space where multiple people can gather in virtual reality. Uh, and in that space, they're able to access content um, mainly from the web. Um, so that could be you know, consuming media, playing web you know, browser-based games, uh, anything that you can do on the web uh, and want to be able to do virtually in alt space. And then making it a more familiar 2D web in a way. Um, so it's kind of an interme intermediary step, okay. I suppose. Um, and then um, that's, that's kind of the, the cornerstone where everything begins and moving beyond that. Uh, enabling web developers to affect the VR space through the web directly, like adjusting you know your your JavaScript on your uh, web development there, and being able to pull 3D objects from the web into the VR space, spawning them into the VR space with you. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of uh, what we're all about. I think it starts there as an app that people download, they experience, they check out. Uh, but eventually, it becomes an API and an SDK that is just used, um, that people use to enable their own web pages and, and so on and so forth. So uh, I think that's, in, in general, um, the most basic terms, that's what we're looking for. Shared VR spaces, shared content that's on the web, uh, and add a layer on top of the 2D web that you can only do in VR uh, that will enable and, and uh, enable creators and consumers to use. Okay, and what are some of these shared experiences you want people to have? Uh, you guys mentioned uh, conference spaces, and uh, during the video, we watched part of a movie. Like, what are some of those experiences that people can have? Yeah, it's as diverse as the web itself. The uh, reason why we brought the 2D web in really is because it's so flexible, and the web itself is, is really open and limitless. Uh, so, I have a feeling a, a lot of people will tell us exactly what, what, they're, what they'll be doing. We're kind of guessing. Um, we're thinking, hey, people are going to want to get together and you know, watch MLB baseball, or they're gonna get together and watch a, a Twitch stream in a, a room that's themed for that particular game, for example. Um, or, you know, Netflix or Hulu or, or something of that nature might have a virtual LAN party, <laughs> what we're calling, where basically everyone has their own personal display, they're playing a web game that's, that's networked between everyone else and they're all in the same spot, you know, hurling insults back and forth <laughs> in VR. Um, so that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg there. Uh, a lot of people, a whole lot of people have mentioned, you know, I want a you know, in, infinite desktop. I want to be able to spawn as many browsers as I can. You know, I want eight browsers, and I you know maximize my data visualization absorbance. I just want to see everything, right? right? right. Um, and so we're trying to enable all those use cases, uh, where you know a person can do all of those things and then and more. I mean, there's so many. You know, uh, we're always discovering stuff that looks cool in alt space. Um, as a web page because of their transparency in HTML5 or uh, because it kind of looks 3D-ish and or the way you interact with the website. There's just all kinds of cool websites that work so much better when they're kind of a virtual display in, in VR. How will people get together? What is the, the mechanism for people discovering uh, other rooms, other people, making friends, uh, all of that kind of thing in the shared space? Yeah, that's a great question. That's something that we're still in prototype stage on. Okay. Uh, to get to a point where you know you can easily discover something that's really cool or something that you're really interested in. Uh, at this point, the loose model is that we want to have a person be able to make their alt space, customize it, uh, that beaming functionality that we showed where you can send what you're looking at to a public display in this space. We want to extrapolate that to maybe you have a bunch of picture frames or you know other things in your space and you send GIFs over to them and cinema graphs and stuff. Totally customize your space with web content, okay. which is real cool. And then at that point, um, we want to have a really intuitive, easy to browse interface for discovering other people you're interested in. Uh, we'd like to have events. Um, so hey, we're gonna have this alt space cool thing happening, come on down, you know, have a huge space where we'll have a, you know, maybe a hundred people at once or something. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's still some, some details that haven't been worked out exactly how we'll go about that, but um, yeah, we want to make sure that's easy and intuitive. Uh, and as far as the UI and UX, that's a big concern for us. So that's why it's kind of 
taking so much time. Yeah. Uh, what's been the reaction since the 11th, since the video was published and since you guys sort of uh, came out of semi-stealth? Yeah, it's been very, very positive. Um, overall, like, you know, in our community that we've released to, uh, as far as like the subreddit and uh, the um, the video that was put on YouTube that we have, thank you for that. Sure. Um, yeah, everyone's very excited. They're like, yes, this looks good, this looks polished, uh, looks like something I want to get my hands on, definitely want to try it. Uh, so that's been all encouraging. Uh, so we're excited to get that feedback from the core community and make sure that um, you know we're, we know that that's our beginning audience. Uh, we ultimately do want to be very accessible, but we know that, hey, you know, there's going to be some hardcore early adopters and we want to make sure we stay connected with the community and uh, that we're providing what you'd like to do. Um, and then on the, on the other side, like outside of the overall VR community, it has been very positive as well. People are, once they see the video, they're like, oh, great presentation. That sounds very exciting. Uh, and then immediately people start brainstorming about, you know, how this can apply to their business model or what they'd like to do with it. Uh, so we've, we've already started several conversations on a lot of stuff, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, but uh, we'll be able to talk about some more things soon. But uh, yeah, it's been cool. All right, that goes into my next question. Uh, when can I have it? Oh man, that's a great question. <laughs> um, we are targeting within the, the next two months uh, to have something rolled out. Uh, it'll probably be exclusive and limited. Um, and we're you know starting with the VR community mostly. Uh, so we're going to uh, try to get that out there and available. And um, you can sign up on altvr.com, go to our website, uh, sign up on our mailing list for beta uh, info and updates, and we'll get on that. I, I think part of the reason why we're doing a kind of a closed beta, a slow rollout, is because it's, it's networking. We want to make sure things are stable, uh, that you know, the, you know, when, how many servers are we looking at, what's the scalability, does the VoIP break, how stable does it stay. I mean, there's a lot of factors we want to make sure that are all you know, in line and working and stable. Uh, that really uh, is rough when there's frames drop in VR, when you're kicked off the server in VR, uh, handling that in a thoughtful way uh, and not just making it charring. I mean, with uh, some other online experiences, you have some leeway there. You can drop a frame here or there, not a big deal, but in VR, um, a much higher level of, of quality is needed. 